Hi guys and welcome. I am Enigmius and this is episode 21 of the Builder's Guide to Feed the Beast. Today we're taking a bit of a detour. I had mentioned that we were going to be starting on an automatic crafting system that would make ultimate hybrid solar panels from scratch and that is still absolutely in the works. That will be started in the next episode but today I came across something that was just kind of interesting enough that I wanted to get it out there as soon as possible to you guys. Um, some of you might find it extremely useful. We're talking about using red power to machines and tubes and such to be able to access your inventory from anywhere in the world. And by inventory, I mean your central storage, not just your player inventory, but your central storage. And that's kind of cool, especially when you're talking about building or later on doing things with like red power frames where you need tons of wires, tons of cable, all kinds of crazy stuff. Being able to access that without having to come all the way back to your base can actually be a tremendous asset. So I'm up here in my very much incomplete storage area. You can see I've got tubes sticking out all over the place still, but that's not actually that bad in this particular case because it lets me show you exactly what's going on here. Now, I just want to illustrate. You can see all of these chests and all of the chests in the row above are connected by pneumatic tubes. And the same goes for this row or these two rows up here is well this top row consisting of one chest they're all connected now if I were to connect these two tubes this guy and this guy and then put a retriever on them I would have access to anything that is in any of these chests as long as I can tell the retriever what I want it to pull and that's one of the cool things about the red power system is having that functionality be able to remotely draw items from your storage now the question is can we make that work for us in a remote sense, in a way that doesn't involve tons and tons and tons of retrievers with all kinds of wireless setups on different frequencies, and the answer is yes. So we're actually going to do a test setup down here, um, because I am by no means ready to uh, set up anything like that in my facilities at this point. I just I have too many other things on the go. You can see... Um, basically going to be working with from this part over you can ignore all this stuff over here it's not related but you can see I do have the stone jacketed blue wire connected to the blue electric battery over there so the retriever here is powered um, and then I've got three iron chests all connected with pneumatic tubes we're going to pretend this is our central storage area you can see we've got some sandstone and some gravel and then in this one here, we've got some glowstone and some marble brick. And we'll just put the rest of this in there. So that's our test sort of inventory that we can use to make sure that whatever the retriever is pulling is exactly what we wanted it to pull and not just some random thing. So first thing that we want to do is we want to get all of our blocks and pipes into place. I think you'll be surprised at just how quickly and, and how straightforward this is, how quickly it goes together. First thing I want to use is a redstone tube. We've seen these before. It's just a pneumatic tube and a piece of redstone. Doubles as basically like a jacketed wire and a pneumatic tube. Very handy. So that will allow us to get a redstone signal to the retriever because all of, almost all the other faces, actually no, all of the other faces will be covered. So um, we'll get this out of the way. Now we've got a couple of filters. You could use transposers. As a personal preference, I use filters for this kind of application. Um, and I just want to point out, you can use transposers um, if you want. I just know there's going to be someone in the comments telling me that you don't need filters, you can use transposers. And I know, I know, it's just one of my little quirks. So you can see I've got this set up so that um, this filter, the input is here, the output is into the side of the retriever. And then this filter, the input is the other side of the retriever, and the output is here. So now you need to suspend disbelief for a moment and pretend that that is an ender chest. Now for the sake of the demonstration, just to keep things simple, I'm going to pretend that this is another ender chest. And then once we're done, we've done the demonstration, I'll show you how to set it up so that you only need one ender chest. So now we'll take this guy, we'll give him a tube connecting. So now we've got a straight line from the chests through the retriever to this chest here. And now we want to connect this guy. Again, I'm going vertical here a little higher than I would need to if I was specifically aiming to be compact. Um, just to keep things visible and also to make it a little bit easier to set up on the fly. So you can see now this filter 
the output is connecting back into this chest. So it's a loop going through the side of the filter and a straight line going through the top and bottom of the filter. Or sorry, the retriever. It's a loop going around the side of the retriever. Yeah, you get you get what I'm saying now. So now I need to be able to get a redstone signal to the retriever, and I also need to get one to the filter. Now the reason why we've got these filters on the sides of the retriever is that allows us to place items into this part of the retriever, which is the part of the retriever that tells it what items to pull. So I'll have an ender chest here, as you know, pretend I've got an ender chest or a, an ender pouch and in my inventory that's coded the same as this chest. I can put an item in the ender pouch. It'll also show up in this chest. I tell the filter to pull it. It'll grab it, stick it in the retriever. The retriever knows what to pull from those guys. And then I can tell this guy to pull it out of the retriever. Back in here, I can grab it out and it's reset and I can use it for other items without having to come back and manually reset it all the time. And that's key to what makes this whole thing work. So now I need, first of all, to get a redstone signal to the retriever so that we can tell it specifically to pull items. Um, you can't really put it on. Well, I mean, you could put it on a timer with, you know, some method of interrupting the, the timer, stopping it from spinning around some signal, but. I would, uh, if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it <laughs> for the sake of simplicity. I'm just doing it this way. So I've got a wireless receiver here. I've got my friend, the jacketed basalt cobblestone, and I'm just going to stitch it to the ground here with a little piece of red alloy wire. So that's good to go. I, whatever signal this guy sends out will end up at the retriever. Now, I need to get a redstone signal to the filters. I want it to be as simple as possible, but one of the things that I found is if I send them both a redstone signal at the same time, I was hoping that the signal would cut off and this guy would not grab anything that this guy put into the retriever until I created the signal again. And then, you know, I could just toggle it back and forth like that and it didn't work. Even just a little tap caused the whatever was in the chest to go right through and all the way back around. So what we need to do is have a toggle system and what better item than a toggle latch. Now this is one of these things that uh, I kind of think that it doesn't get used enough and as a result it stays in that intimidating list where people don't really know exactly what it does so they won't even try and use it because trying to figure it out seems like um, more than what it is. So I'm going to show you how to use this today. It's actually really straightforward, really useful, and it's not expensive to make. It's all items that we've used before. The stone wafers, the stone wires, the stone cathodes, and a lever. So really, really easy to make. And then I'll just show you. Drop it here. You want to this consider this as sort of like the center line, right? So anywhere you put it, um, the signal is going to be split to either side of that center line. And in this case, because we want it either side this way going around the chest, we're going to give it a spin. Now, take the screwdriver out of my hand. You notice if I right click on it, it manually toggles the lever. And when it toggles the lever, it changes which cathode is lit. Now, if I take some of this red alloy wire, you can see that that's indicating where it's sending its own redstone current. You'll notice we're not providing it a current anywhere else. It's providing its own solid redstone current, and we're just toggling it back and forth, which is kind of handy on its own. But if we take a wireless receiver, we set it up here. You can see the red dots are lining up with this red line here. We'll change this to 101. That's the frequency we'll use. If you want to use a different one, of course, use a different one. Then we've got our remote that's set to frequency 101. You just shift click when it's in your hand, as long as you're not, you know, facing anything else. Wireless remote frequency 101. And then we right click, and you can see remotely we're toggling the latch. So the one thing that I was a little bit concerned about with using this is it doesn't look like a normal redstone pulse. Like that over there looks like a normal redstone pulse. This is just a, think of it as a really, really long pulse right it's still going to work it's just going to toggle between the different um, filters so to finish this off we'll just take some more jacketed cable more jacketed cable now those are connected 
Everything here is connected. That guy is powered. All we need to do now is pretend that we've actually got something in our inventory that we want more of. And that's the system requires that you have some of what you want the system to extract for you. Otherwise, you won't be able to tell it what you want. So what we've got here, again, we'll pretend we just opened our ender pouch. We'll put this glowstone dust in here. And now we want to send a pulse to 101 because this is what's managing our filters that manage the instructions to the retriever. So we send it a pulse, and now, if everything worked, we should be able to go over here. No, it didn't. I think I had it. There we go. Yeah, I had it on the wrong one to start. Now we go. There you go. Now you can see we've got glowstone dust in this part of the retriever, which is key because now the retriever knows what we want it to pull. And now if we go around here, we'll set this to 100. I almost forgot to set it. Again, whatever frequency you want to use, as long as it's not the same as the other one. But you can use the same remote. You can just shift right click in the field, wherever, change the frequency. And now every time we right click, it sends a redstone pulse and grabs a piece of glowstone out of the chest. So that's basically proof of concept is we've just specifically given the retriever instructions on what to pull and then we've been successful in pulling it and you can actually pulse pretty fast. Now one of the downsides you might say is that if you've got one and you want to stack back that's going to take a while or you know what if you want six stacks back well you can go into your chest or your ender pouch as it were after you've pulled some, take those guys out, reset your retriever, remember, set it to this frequency, and then click again, it'll make that filter pull the item out, it'll come back around, oh, and I just right clicked again when I opened the chest, so it went back into the retriever, you just have to change to something else. That is not the remote. Now you can take that guy. I guess you could have just gone like that. And now we should have 23 glowstone in the retriever. Yeah. So now when it pulls, it'll pull 23 glowstone. So you can basically, you know, grab a bunch, cycle it back into the retriever so that it'll pull more and more and more up to a stack, two stacks, whatever the hell you want. Actually, you can only do one stack with this setup because it won't cycle more than that. But still, you know, how, how many times do you need to click to fill your inventory to get a full inventory with stacks? So that's basically, like I say, proof of concept. It works. You can get as many items as you need, limited only by how many items are in your inventory to grab in the first place, as long as you've got a sample of that in your inventory that you can use to feed the retriever. Now... If we wanted to cut down on how many ender chests and ender pouches that we need, easiest way to do that, I'm just going to grab this out of here for now. We'll put it back in here. It's not complicated. It's actually very, very simple, but it just adds an element to the process um, that I wanted to leave out just for the purposes of explaining it. So we just take that chest out and we connect that. So now we've got a continuous network all leading to this chest. Now, the nice thing about red power is it's not going to come out of the retriever and go that way because there's no place for it to go. It's not going to try and shove itself in the output of the filter. You can take that any way you want. Um, but what it does mean is that we just have to be a little bit more careful. Again, pretend now that we've got one ender chest and one corresponding ender pouch, right? So we want to... Let's do marble br bricks this time. Actually, no, that'll be confusing because I've already got some. We'll just do glowstone again. We'll make sure... Um, I just have to cycle the filters. 101. Okay, so make sure I'm not holding that. I've learned my lesson. So now we've got the glowstone in our ender pouch that we want to tell the system to pull. We feed it into the retriever. We change our frequency, you can see, mash the right click, you can pull pretty quick and automatically it doesn't, doesn't get confused, it doesn't go where it's not supposed to go, 
It just goes in there. The only difference is you just have to be a little bit more attentive. Now say, okay, we've got enough glowstone. We don't need any more. So we're going to cycle the one out of the retriever. Out it goes. And then empty the ender pouch. You don't want to leave anything in there because the next time you right click on that frequency, it's going to go on the retriever. It's not going to ruin your whole life. It's just going to make for a confusing situation when you're out in the field trying to figure out what's in the retriever, what's cycling here, what's going there. Um, you just have to be diligent about, you know, emptying out your ender pouch after each time you reset the retriever just so that you're clear on exactly what items you're sending the retriever. And that's it. That's the full scope of the entire shenanigan. Like I say, if you wanted to get creative with different red power logic blocks or red power computers or computer craft or whatever, you could probably make this even more streamlined and elegant if you wanted. In fact, I'm sure that you could. But in terms of just Joe Average user wanting to set up something that works, this is the real deal. So I hope it was helpful. We are absolutely going to get down to the business with the auto crafting setup in the next episode. And if you're looking forward to that, you want to be notified when I add it. Easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and take care.